This is the Realme GT6, and this might be the flagship killer you're waiting for. Okay, okay, okay. I know you guys are shocked with that intro, but I figured I'd give you something a little bit more spicy. But this is the Realme GT6, and today we're gonna compare it against the Galaxy S24 Ultra because the tagline of flagship killer has been thrown around by so many people, but this might be a very good contender. And why is that? So when you look at what Realme has crafted here, this, the, this device looks absolutely gorgeous. The display, the back, very shiny. You definitely need to clean and wipe it as much as possible because just a little tap of your fingerprint. Boom, look at that. Right there, already. Just a real quick tap. So you definitely have to clean it, but it's still a lovely device. Comes in two colors. We've got it in fluid silver and also in razor green. Now, why do I say this might be a true flagship killer? Let's start off with the display. 6.78 inches, full HD+. Yes, it's not 2K, but honestly, no one really uses that 2K. Um, this also is a 120 hertz display uh, with a touch sampling rate of 2500 hertz. So when you're gaming, it is the super smooth sliding around the screen. Uh, that's awesome. But the other awesome thing about this display is that its maximum nit brightness is 6,000 nits, not 1600, not six, 6,000. Now the S24 Ultra is at around 2600 nits. So, that's a huge gap. That's more than two times its value and something we'll see when we go outside because it's super sunny out there. Now, under the hood, it's powered by the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3, not to be confused with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 on in the Galaxy S23 Ultra, but it's still a Gen 3 Snapdragon 8 series uh, CPU, so we'll see how they stack up against each other. We do have a battery, a 5500 milliamp battery in here, which is nice, also larger than the S24 Ultra. I did say 23 earlier, apologies, but it's 24. And uh, you have super voke charging of 120 watts, which means we're getting about 50% in 10 minutes. Again, super fast charging on this device. So there are a lot of things here that is already stacking up. Then we move to the camera housing where we have 50 megapixel main sensor. We have a 50 megapixel telephoto and eight megapixel ultra wide. So there's a lot here to see with this device, but I have to say when you hold it, it feels very comfortable. It's got curved edges on the side, which is something that I have always loved in the past and I do like, but I think a lot of people will go, mm, maybe not real me, maybe we should have just stuck with, you know, a very classic look. But that being said, it feels really nice, looks good. Just look at that Gojo wallpaper. Just look at that. There you go. Let me just unlock it for you so you can see better. Look at that. Look at how good that display looks. It's very nice, very sexy. I like it. Now, navigating, uh, this is running, of course, latest version of Android. It feels very familiar, it's comfortable, honestly. People who say that some Chinese manufacturers do not make you know, their operating system, it feels like any other Android phone, so that part is clear. But let's take a look at how they pair up, especially both processors between the 8S Gen 3 on the Realme and the Galaxy's H Gen 3. So looking at our Geekbench 6, and we're looking at, of course, our CPU scores, single core scores are much higher on the uh, Realme GT6 at 1906 compared to 1579 on the Galaxy, with a multi-core score also higher at 5170 compared to 4596. So some really nice improvements here on the scores. And then when we move over to the GPU scores, we do have Different different scenario here with the Realme GT6 coming out 8,956 with the GPU score OpenCL, while the Galaxy has 9,396. So there's a split between CPU and GPU in terms of performance, but it means that at least both of them are around the same ballpark, and we should get some very interesting performance from both. So we start off with some games here, and we first of all played Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. Now. Both of them handle it pretty well. Warzone Mobile at its highest settings for the Realme, as well as the highest settings for the Galaxy as well. And we're able to play quite well with both games. I think in terms of uh, the uh, FPSs, they're around the same range for the Galaxy, peaking just a little bit better, but performance was solid overall for both. And I will say that touch sampling rate really comes to play when you're playing FPSs like Call of Duty. It feels really, felt really smooth on the Realme. It was still smooth on the Galaxy, but, Higher touch sampling rate was great. Now moving over to Genshin Impact, 
here we saw some really good performance from both devices at its max setting. Uh, I would say that the Galaxy, I think, held up a little longer in terms of the FPS, but again, they were roughly around the same for the, for the same period of time. Now, some differentiation comes in with PUBG Mobile, where the Realme is the, one of the few devices that can play PUBG Mobile at 120 frames per second. You cannot do that on the Galaxy at this point in time, uh, but it's nice to see. So PUBG fans, if you're looking for the highest refresh rate and frame rates, uh, then of course the Realme GT6 is that device for you. So gaming wise, it's quite capable as you can see and stacks up quite well with of course the market leader, the Galaxy S24 Ultra. So let's go ahead and test out the speakers in this device to see how well Realme does compared to the Galaxy. So Realme actually sounded pretty good, but it sounded a little bit muffled and tighter, especially in the mid range. The Galaxy was louder and also a little bit cleaner as well. So I'll give the edge to the Galaxy there, but Realme I think is again, stepping up the game. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some photos. Yeah, those photos look pretty nice, right? I mean, honestly, I think this is where Realme has really stepped up with the imaging here. Now, of course, video is one thing, but the photos, especially during daylight, looks pretty crisp. I like some of the portrait photos as well, bokeh in the background. The Galaxy didn't do well in certain portrait photos, which I didn't like, but I want you guys to decide and leave your thoughts down below. Fight it out. Who had better photos? Samsung Knights, bring your swords out. Real me Avengers, I think. That's what I'm gonna call you guys. Go ahead, defend your position. Let me know where they stand. Now, when we look at other ancillary things here, we do know that the uh, Realme device has faster charging than the Galaxy, especially the 120 watt charger. It just does a better job. I don't have to even show you any testing because it is a faster charging speed on there. Now, the Galaxy has its own quirks that actually uh, give it some advantages. 
If you're a fan of the S Pen, the S Pen, of course, gives you a whole different slew of functionality where you can write on the device, you can use different features there. You also have uh, the ability to use it as a remote control in terms of taking photos separately. Uh, you don't have to use a timer. And then there's also the AI features. Now, both of them do have that, but the Galaxy does have all the uh, Gemini Google integrated features built into there. Things like um, circle to search, which is something that I actually use a lot. I thought it was a gimmick, I apologize, but I actually use it quite a bit. Uh, so there's that there, but of course there are AI features also on the uh, Realme in terms of photography as well. So they have a lot of things that stack up to each other, but honestly, I think the Realme GT6 is a very good contender. Now it's rumored price point, I wasn't giving the pricing yet, but rumored price point is around 750. The question you have to ask yourself is, would you pay 750 for a Realme device or would you pay 1300, right? Roughly, maybe 1200. 1200 if you get the, the, the lower spec uh, model in terms of uh, storage or 1300 for a Galaxy one terabyte. That is the, the question here. Uh, in terms of that price range, what would you pay for? And I think a lot of people might be swayed by what Realme has to offer with this device. It's got really good cameras, it's got very good performance in terms of its uh, uh, processor. You've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, you've got storage at 512. Uh, it really stacks up well, and I think a lot of people like it. I like what I'm seeing here from Realme, and I like the kind of competition that puts people like Samsung on its toes so they can do better and we get more competition back. And Realme does better, Xiaomi does better, Moto does better, uh, you know, who else? LG, no, LG's not in the game, my bad, sorry. But you get the idea. Anyway, guys, tell me what you think. Do you think the Realme GT6 is that flagship killer we've been waiting for? Do you think this device has what it takes in terms of photos, videos, as well as also performance for you on a day-to-day -day basis? Minus, of course, all these smudges that you can see behind on screen here. So if you have any questions, any comments, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.